Hello. This is called As I See It. You know, the world's in turmoil right now, as you all know, and many are wondering what's to come, where are we in history, what's happening? There's much to be concerned about. We know there's an enemy. We don't know who to trust. Everyone's against everyone. Christians are hated. Jews are hated. We have plagues. We have an enemy who wants to destroy us. On and on and on it goes. And some have asked, are we in the tribulation time? Are, are we on the birth pangs? Are we feeling the birth pangs right now? We might be. We might be feeling some of them. But we're certainly not to the hard pains that bring forth birth. And those labor pains are for Israel anyway. They're not for the world. The world's always had tribulation and trouble. But the tribulation to come is called Jacob's trouble in the book of Jeremiah. Much trouble is coming. God is judging Israel soon. Sounds harsh, doesn't it? But why are they going to be judged? Most of them have rejected their Messiah. Most of them have. Paul then turned to the Gentiles and brought the gospel to them, and they willingly received it. Some. Many people think they know God, or their God is God. So much confusion and disappointment going on in the world today. But I don't believe we are in the time of Jacob's trouble yet. And the reason I believe that is because we, the bride of Christ, the Messiah's uh, chosen ones, are still here on earth. It says we are not destined for the wrath of God. We will be taken out of this world. If that's your hope, I'm so grateful. If it's not, no, there's more coming. There is a hell. There is separation from God that continues. We don't just die and dissolve and turn into nothing. There's a resurrections coming, each in its own order, the Bible says. Many resurrections to come. We've already had several. The last big one was at the cross when the graves were opened up and the saints were seen walking around. So what are we expecting? What's next in history? A world war? Are we looking for terrible things? There's going to be wars. There's going to be tribulations. But is that should that be our focus on deciding where we're at? A virus that comes along or a fake virus, whichever is true? No. God has set times for everything he does. His exact timing, the day he was born, the exact timing for his death, the exact timing for his resurrection. And then the confusing part is everyone talks about his return. Are you looking for his return or are you looking to depart this planet? Not in death. No, some of us are going to leave without dying. So Christians, Messianic believers, those with hope, we're not looking for his return because when he returns, we're coming with him. It says that repeatedly in the scriptures. We're coming with him. So we've got to go in order to return. So what are we looking for then? Are we looking to go through the tribulation and, and be uh, trials and, and separation of all kinds of terrible things like we're in now? Troubles are here. Troubles are coming. But it's not the finale. Not just yet, because I'm still here speaking to you <laughs> and many believers. He has a purpose for us here. He wants his spirit here now. It's not time for us to go. The point of day is set. And when that day comes, the trumpet's going to sound and the dead will be raised first. The dead in Christ. The dead who believed in Messiah as God. And then we who are alive on earth, whichever group you're in, we're going to meet the Lord in the air. That is not his return. That's his coming for us. We must go away for a while. 
So what are we expecting next? Are we expecting to suffer through a world war? We don't know. I'm not going to say I know. I don't know. He could be here for us next September, or it could be a thousand years or more. We don't know. But what's our job? To get ready? To be ready? And all my heart cries out for those that think everyone dies and goes to heaven, or the other group that die uh, that believe that everyone dies and just uh, uh, disintegrates into nothing. Both of those ideas are false. No. One must make an exact effort to come to Christ, come to Messiah. He's our Moshiach. He's our beloved. Okay, so I want to just run through some things that need to happen, or are going to happen, scripturally speaking. Um, after our return, after our departure, <laughs> not our return, our departure, many things are going to happen on earth. The nations of the world, the Gentile nations are going to be judged. But this is all called Jacob's trouble. Yes, I'm sorry to say, but it's about the Jews and their punishment or their rejection of God and their acceptance of him. Both are happening. Both are going to happen. But here we go. Just as John the Baptist came before the baby Jesus was born, what did he come for? He came to prepare the way for the, Gent the Jewish nations to believe that their Messiah was coming. And then there's a funny scripture that says, they ask if, if that was if he was Elijah, and he's saying no. One like John the Baptist. So we're looking for a time when uh, helpers are coming to the earth. And uh, many of them are on earth, but Elijah is coming. He will come again, and he will turn the hearts of the children to the fathers. So who are the fathers? That's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's going to preach the gospel to the Jewish nation who are in terrible trouble at that time. Terrible trial. Then he's going to, uh, before that, he's sending the, the, the 144,000 Jewish males who are what? Faithful to God. Maybe not Messiah yet, but faithful to God. He's going to use them as witnesses all over the earth. And by the time they are taken out of the earth, they too have come to know their Messiah. They're all coming from around the earth. They're here now, or they're going to be born, depending on where we are in history. And they're going to be a witness to them all over. Then the Lord's going to have two witnesses. Much discussion on these two characters, but I believe they're human beings either born now or yet to be born. Not Elijah, not Enoch, not Moses, but other two other people, two other males, who are going to once again be witnesses to the truth. What's the truth? The gospel truth. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Preparing the Jews to receive their Messiah. Oh, how he pours out his love upon them to draw them back in even in their persecution. He's sending them. They too will depart the earth. Interesting. God has these people and then he takes them out. He has his, us, he takes us out. He has 144 and he'll take them out. He has the two witnesses and he'll take them out. And taking them out means taking them to heaven to glory. Uh, and the final thing, it says... The gospel will be preached to all nations, and then the end will come. But the thing we've forgotten to look at here is who's preaching that gospel. At that time, it will be angelic beings declaring the truth from the heavens, from the air. All people all over the earth will hear. Because shortly thereafter, the final group will be taken out of the tribulation period God will take care of his Jews in the wilderness, and the rest of them will be destroyed at his coming. So all these chances man's had, we've already had a lot of chances, but the people that are living in this terrible time have the greatest chances of all if they would just turn 
and no. <laughs> but why wait till then? This is the day. Don't 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 be a, a, a lukewarm Christian. Be a hot on fire one for the Lord. Give him your everything. Give him your best. He's so worth it. Okay, back to that. There's going to be a new um, high priest for the temple in Jerusalem. The temple will be rebuilt by man. And already they have a high priest set aside. And I believe that high priest that will be chosen for this tribulation time will be the Antichrist character who is coming on the scene. Not while we're here, but when we're gone. We, the church, we, the bride. That person will be there as well as the false prophet. And both of them will be indwelt with satanic power. Satan himself, Lucifer is his name. The angel of light will inhabit these two men. Reaping great destruction upon the Jewish nation. It says there's great deception coming. And yes, we have it now. We don't know who to believe or what to believe. But. A great deception is coming on the Jewish nation like no other time before. It's already begun. I've seen the, I've seen the little birth pangs happening here and there that they're they're willing to compromise. Anyway, that's going to happen. And when that when they finally wake up and realize their temple has been defiled, that they have been duped, they're going to know they have to flee. Just as they fled in 70 AD, the, Jew, the Christians got out of town and the Jews were scattered all over the world. At this time, God will take whatever Jews are left in Jerusalem and Judea only and take them to the wilderness to take care of them while all the havoc is going on earth. And you know what? A lot of it's coming from God. It's not all satanic coming. God is going to judge the earth, the planet. There's going to be earthquakes galore. There's going to be all kinds of rattling and carrying on in the planet Earth because whatever man is doing, the Earth responds to it. We can see that in Noah's flood. The Earth was changing. Great change was coming. There's always great changes that come when we come into a new dispensation of time. So all these things are going to happen. The Jews are going to be kept safe just as Noah's little family was kept safe. Christians are going to be coming to the Lord at this time. Multitudes of them. Multitudes of Muslims are going to come to the Lord at this time. Multitudes, well, not multitudes of Jews, they're not that many. Israel's going to be decimated once again. They're back in the land and they're making it flourish of their own hand with the help of the Lord. But it won't be the supernatural kind yet, like they were before when there was manna. The Lord carried them. They didn't even have to walk across the land. They were floated or flew across to, to go. They're not doing that now. They're working at their own hand, and God's blessing them mightily. Oh, the things they blessed them with. But it's not the fulfillment of those scriptures. There's a time coming yet where they will be, but they'll be taken care of. And then the earthquakes will happen. And then when the Messiah breaks through the sky, the, earth, the sky is going to be rolled back as a scroll. Earth is going to be opened up. The graves are going to be opened up. The Jewish nation is going to come out of their graves. Ezekiel 37. And join those in the wilderness where God's taking care of these Jews for a period of time. And the whole house of Israel will be gathered together. Well, when that is happening, war is going on in Jerusalem. And war is getting ready to go on in the Valley of Megiddo, Valley of Jezreel. We call that Armageddon. But before that happens, he's going around and he's judging the nations who have been unfaithful and gone off to seek after other gods and who have been jealous of their brother Jacob and caused them harm. You can read that in the book of Isaiah about the, the place of Basra where it says, who was this whose garments are dripped in blood? It's Yeshua Jesus as he returns and he's judging the nations, those who have harmed Israel. 
they're all his cousins, they're cousins, they're related. The Jews and the Arabs, even the Persians a little bit, because they're all kind of mixed up. But first he's judging them, and then he puts his feet down on the Mount of Olives, and the earth splits like never before. And the mountains are going to disappear, the rivers and the streams, and the oceans are going to change. The whole topography of, a, of the earth is going to change. And Moriah, the mountain of the temple, is going to rise up. But he's going to destroy that temple. And in a few days, he'll rebuild his own. So all of that havoc has to happen. And then what? The amazing thing, God doubly rewards Israel back. Their punishment is over. They've seen their Messiah now. They've had all these opportunities to come to him. They've received their Messiah, and he will pour out his spirit of supplication upon them. And they'll weep and mourn as one weeps for the loss of a firstborn son. And isn't Yeshua Israel's firstborn son? Yes. Remember, this isn't the time for the church. We've already dealt, been dealt with. Or we've already been taken away. We are in heaven in the presence of the Almighty. All these things are happening on earth. And as that scroll rolls back and the trumpet is sounding, we enter earth's atmosphere again with our Lord. As he goes and judges those nations, as he puts his feet on the Mount of Olives, have you ever thought of yourself being there when the Mount of Olives splits? You will be with him. Ever thought that you would be going to Armageddon? Oh, yes, you will, if you're with the Lord. Yes. Many things, many things are coming. Many wonderful, glorious things are coming. And we don't want to miss them. We don't need to ponder and get all worked up and carry on. And yes, I don't like being quarantined. But there's so much good coming. And the, the point of it all is to make sure we're on who is on the Lord's side. <laughs> to make sure you're on his side. That you love him. That you've given your heart to him. That you've welcomed him into your being. And he will come. And then after all that takes place in our War of Armageddon and all this and that, we enter into another period of time which is called the kingdom of God. We pray about it. Thy kingdom come. It's coming to earth. It's not that everybody's departing and turning into nothing or that we all go to heaven and do whatever forever. We're all destined to come back. This is the home for humans. Not Mars, not Venus, not the moon, not the sun. Earth, given to us. Blessed of God are we to be born and to live. And we're going to be there with him through his kingdom for that thousand years. We're going to be working for him. Uh, I'm not sure. I have a lot of ideas, but not sure. But the Jewish nation is going to repopulate the earth. And these babies are going to have to come to faith as well. And when that time is over, there's a little more havoc. We have the Gog and Magog war to face. It's not the next war coming. It's the final battle after the millennial reign. The kingdom of God ends and eternity begins. So that's, that's the next time. And what's so sad about that is the Jewish nations are going to war against one another. Oh, it just breaks my heart. And they're going to come up, meaning to war, to the beloved city. Jerusalem is plagued with warring through the ages and it's not going to be over. There'll be a respite for the thousand years. And then there'll be war again. But that's it. That's the finale on the wars. God will take care of all of that and judgment of the nations come on. But there's gatherings and there's, there's resurrections and there's much more than you've done in your life. Much more is to come. Thank you for listening.